Management Chapter 4. Chapter 4 is all about meetings, meetings, and more meetings. So why do we need a meeting? Hmm. Think about it. So a meeting is the most important tool for a manager because in a meeting, that is the most effective medium through which any manager gets their work done, right? So a meeting is a medium through which managerial work is performed. We as managers um, don't necessarily do frontline work, meaning we don't, like let's say in my case, I don't write software as much as people in my team write software. So if you're managing a plant, you're probably not maintaining the plant. You're overseeing that your team is maintaining the plant. But how do you make sure that your team is doing the right job at the right quality? That's where a meeting is needed. So for a manager, the meeting is the most effective medium. So is also the case for people working together. So meeting is needed not just for the manager, but it's an effective tool for where managers actually get their work done. So there are three big types of meetings um, in the book. One-on-one uh, -on -one meetings where you talk directly to your employee uh, in a private setting. Staff meetings where it's more operational or in the book it's said process oriented meeting where your entire team gets together once in a while and then you discuss things that are important to the team. And then there is specific mission oriented or goal oriented meetings where there's a problem and you know, you need to do something. There's an opportunity that need, cannot be wasted, for example, a timely attention is needed. So one-on-ones are the best place for you to have a heart to heart conversation with your employee, to build that relationship, to provide that coaching. You, you as a manager can improve your leverage if your employees have uh, high level of skill sets, right? They can do a good job. So a manager is as good as their best lieutenant is one of the quotes that I read. So you are as good as a leader, as good as employees you have in your team. So things like how frequent should we have the one-on-ones? How uh, long should the one-on-ones be? So I think it depends on the task relevant maturity or the skill set of your employee, how skilled they are, how mature they are. Typically 30 minutes is too short because you can only bring up small things in a 30 minute conversation. So I would recommend at least an hour. And having a clear agenda that the employee sets and drives the meeting is probably most useful. So a running Google Doc or running document that's shared between the two of you, the manager and employee, where you discuss, you know, what is this thing that you wanted to bring up? And you both can contribute and keep notes as to what things are top of mind for each other. You know, things that are troubling, uh, indicators that are not easy to discuss in a, a public setting could be discussed here, right? Career growth is another area where one-on-one -on -one coaching is most useful. So once a week, once in two weeks, uh, one hour at the minimum with a clear agenda uh, that both of you drive, ideally it's driven by the employee, is a great one-on-one. -on -one. The second one is the staff meeting, where you are bringing the whole team together. There's this, there's a sense of belonging that's actually very much evident in a staff meeting. You you have your peers have free discussions on topics that are important. Um, ideally, a staff meeting is uh, both structured and unstructured. So the manager drives the staff meeting um, and uh, has certain structure to it in the beginning so that he can convey uh, and he can facilitate certain discussions. Um, manager has most leverage at this point to encourage debates between team members uh, and the team members also get to know each other. If there are certain operational uh, metrics that are to be reviewed as a team, then that's great. Now the entire team knows what's important and if there are any issues and updates, key updates could be part of operations or process oriented meeting. It's also a good place for motivation. For the manager to motivate the employees. If there is a hard time, if there's a trouble, if there's a win, the celebrating success, knowing each other, and then facilitating some open candid questions to be asked, but not in a way that, you know, uh, is so anonymous that it could also derail the meeting. So anonymity helps. Um, so figuring out what works so that people in your team opens up to ask 
questions that's top of mind to them. And as a manager, you would have to be very mindful of the body language. If certain people might be really discussing on the topic, certain people may go off topic, certain people are disengaged. So how do you get them to uh, engage again? You would have to observe in the meeting. You'd have to lead some parts. You would have to question, provoke discussions. You would have to guide them. Eventually, you might also have to decide if decisions are not being taken. So that's the process-oriented staff meetings, operations meetings that you'd probably want to have on a regular cadence. The third and the final one that's in the book is uh, mission-oriented. There's a big problem. You need to get something done in a timely fashion. And there's a specific goal, and decisions need to be taken. That's when a goal-oriented meeting needs to happen. Remember, each of these meetings cost a lot of money. Every one person per hour will be like hundreds of dollars and so together, if you have a one one hour meeting for six people, it's like five to six hundred dollars, right? And so if you have 20 people, it's like two thousand dollars, right? So or something like that. And it's pretty it's uh, pretty intense in terms of cost. And also before the meeting, people are uh, have to you know prepare after the meeting their action items. So making sure there's a clear agenda for every person invited and that there is a clear plan for them to contribute is pretty important. And those people who are making the decisions uh, need to have the skin in the game. So only involve those people who have skin in the game to actually solve the problem. And uh, have clear notes that are sent out, decisions that are made, actions that need to be taken as part of mission-oriented meeting, right? If you are having more than 25% of your time being spent as a team uh, on mission-oriented meetings, then you're probably going to be burning out. People are going to be staying up late and then a lot of hard uh, hours being spent, but it can't be sustainable. And so you probably want to figure out what gaps are there in the operations meeting or process-oriented meeting that could reduce the goal-oriented meetings. So a few items to think as homework um, for this is to think about, like, you know, how is your time being spent as a leader? How much time is going uh, in meetings versus actual contribution, you will probably realize that you'll be spending a lot of time in meetings, certain information gathering, learning, coaching, uh, achieving certain goals. Um, but there's also going to be a need for you to set up a regular process-oriented meeting where you actually make sure that things are proactively taken care of. And if you see that there are a lot more than mission-oriented meetings, then you probably want to reduce it by systematically thinking about how you can fix it. So Having clear agenda helps with uh, folks coming prepared to the meeting. Uh, things that can be done offline should be done offline. It's very, very expensive to have everything being discussed at the meeting. Um, and have some sort of a recurring reflection on where your time is being spent. Are you using the right medium? Are you having the right set of meetings? Are you getting your entire team motivated to... Uh, bring their best self by coaching, by having the right metrics in place, by achieving the goals that you set for yourself. All right, so meetings, meetings, meetings. You you should probably be thinking of reducing meetings uh, and also reducing mission-oriented meetings that are inefficient. Meetings are good. You get a lot done, but if it's inefficient, you should probably think about it. And hopefully this chapter gave us a pretty good insight as to how to think about meetings as something good, but also something that we can have a framework as to there are certain types of meetings and the certain you know objectives of those meetings. So I, I felt this chapter was uh, pretty good in that sense. Until the next chapter, thanks.